Repair Clinic makes fixing things easy. With millions of replacement parts available on our website and the help you need to do the repair yourself. Since we encourage you to perform this procedure safely, a warning icon will appear when you should use caution. Before you begin the dryer installation, refer to the installation manual for a list of recommended tools and parts you may need. When using a power cord, a grounded electrical outlet will need to be located within two feet of either side of the dryer. The electrical supply for the appliance must be 240 volts at 60 hertz. A dedicated 30 amp circuit is required. The rear of the appliance should be positioned no closer than 5 inches from the wall. If installing the dryer in a cabinet or closet, allow for at least 1 inch of space on the sides and top of the appliance. There should be enough space to allow the door to fully open. If a closet door is used, the door should be louvered or space left at the top and bottom of the door to ensure adequate airflow. Tip the dryer back and rest it on a large piece of cardboard to help prevent floor damage. Locate the diamond marking on the four leveling legs. Thread the legs into the leg holes by hand. Use an adjustable wrench to finish threading the legs until the diamond markings are no longer visible. Place a carton corner post from the dryer packaging under each of the rear corners of the appliance. Then return the dryer to its upright position. Gently slide the dryer on the corner post until it is close to its final location. Leave enough room to connect the exhaust vent. Before installing a power supply cord, confirm that the cord is not plugged into the electrical outlet. Use a 5 16th inch socket or nut driver to unthread the screw securing the terminal block cover. Using a Phillips head screwdriver, unthread the screws from a 3 quarter inch UL listed strain relief. Insert the tabs of the two clamp sections of the strain relief into the hole below the terminal block opening. Thread the screws to hold the two clamp sections together. Now insert the power cord through the strain relief. When installing a three-wire power cord, unthread the center terminal block screw. Secure the white or center neutral wire of the power cord to the center terminal block post under the screw. Connect the remaining wires under the outer terminal block screws. Be sure to tighten all of the screws. When installing a four-wire power cord, first remove the neutral ground wire from the green external ground conductor screw. Unthread the center terminal block screw. Now align the neutral ground wire with the white or center wire of the power cord and secure both under the center terminal block screw. Next, secure the power cord grounding wire under the green external ground conductor screw. Connect the remaining wires. With the power cord in place, tighten the strain relief screws to secure the cord. Realign the terminal block cover and rethread the screw to secure.
To reduce the risk of fire, this dryer must be exhausted outdoors. Refer to the vent system charts in the installation manual to determine the number of vent sections and elbow joints required. Only 4-inch wide venting and clamps should be used. While 45-degree elbow joints will provide better airflow than 90-degree elbows, the goal should be to use the fewest number of elbows and turns as possible for the venting to reach the outside of the home. An exhaust hood will need to be installed over the vent on the home's exterior wall, positioned at least 12 inches from the ground. If the dryer model uses steam, your next step is to turn the cold water faucet off and disconnect the washer inlet hose from the faucet port. Remove the old rubber washer from the inlet hose and replace it with a new washer. Insert new rubber washers into both ends of the provided two-foot inlet hose. Now thread the two-foot inlet hose onto the faucet port by hand until snug. Thread the opposite end of the inlet hose onto the short end of the Y connector. Using pliers, tighten the couplings an additional two-thirds turn, but avoid over-tightening. Next, thread the washer inlet hose onto one of the Y connector ports. Insert new washers into both ends of a new 5-foot inlet hose. Thread the new hose onto the remaining port. Use pliers to tighten the couplings an additional two-thirds turn. Now remove the protective cap from the fill valve on the rear panel of the dryer. Thread the inlet hose onto the valve and tighten. Turn the cold water faucet back on and check for leaks around all of the hose fittings. If you're installing the dryer in an open area, you can now attach the vent to the exhaust outlet. Use a 4-inch clamp to secure. If applicable, move the dryer to its final location or as near as possible, being careful not to crush or kink the vent. Remove the carton corner posts. Next, determine if the dryer is level from side to side and front to back. If the dryer is not level, support the appliance with a wood block and use an adjustable wrench to rotate the leveling leg or legs clockwise to lower the dryer or counterclockwise to raise the dryer. Confirm that the appliance is level, all four legs are in contact with the floor, and the dryer does not rock. If you would like the dryer door to open to the left instead of the right, Use a T25 Torx bit to remove the four mounting screws, securing the door hinge. With the screws unthreaded, lift the door up to detach it from the door frame and place the door on a towel or blanket. Next, remove the two screws securing the door strike to the frame. Rotate the strike 180 degrees and align it on the opposite side of the door frame. Secure it with the screws. Now unthread the four screws from the door frame and thread them into the holes on the opposite side.
Using a Phillips head screwdriver, unthread the 10 screws holding the inner and outer door assemblies together. Lift off the inner door assembly and set it aside. Now use a T15 Torx bit to unthread the two screws at the top and bottom of the outer door assembly, securing the outer window and retainer. Leave the two screws securing the door handle intact at this time. Rotate the outer glass retainer clockwise to detach the assembly from the trim ring. Separate the outer door glass from the retainer. Next, remove the screws to release the door handle from the retainer. Align the handle on the opposite side of the retainer and secure it with the screws. Rotate the outer glass so the notch in the glass aligns with the handle, then snap the glass into place on the retainer. Align the outer window and retainer on the trim ring and rotate counterclockwise to lock it into place. Thread the screws at the top and bottom of the door to secure. Avoid over-tightening. Next, use the T25 Torx bit to unthread the three screws, securing the latch plate and backing plate to the inner door assembly. Set the plates aside. Unthread the five screws securing the hinge assembly. Move the hinge assembly to the opposite side of the inner door and secure it with the screws. Now align the latch plate and backing plate where the hinge used to be and replace the screws to secure. Realign the inner and outer door assemblies. Thread and tighten the 10 screws. Hook the door hinge onto the front panel door frame. Then thread and tighten the mounting screws. Plug the power cord into the electrical outlet. And, if you were unable to do it earlier, attach the vent to the exhaust outlet and secure it with the 4-inch clamp. If applicable, fully position the appliance in the cabinet or closet, making sure not to damage the vent, and the dryer should be ready for use. At Repair Clinic, we make fixing things easy. Thank you for supporting the production of these videos by purchasing your parts from our website.